Hi, CC tutors. Last week we talked about air pressure, if you want to recall that experiment for your students. We studied about something that was invisible, and this week we are going to study about something that is very, very small. It is not invisible, but we will be talking about atoms and molecules and dipping our toes into a little bit of chemistry vocabulary this week. We are going to talk about crystal formations and crystallization, and we're going to start the class by making our super saturated solution and putting it on a cookie sheet with tin foil, and then we will do our discussion on crystals while our experiment is happening. We'll pass out all of the magnifying glasses and get the microscope set up so at the end of class we can actually look at the crystals that we formed during that 30 minute period. So the first thing that you'll do after our Bible Connection verse, which is just a short verse this week, um, discuss and reflect on that, is we are going to start our Epsom salt solution. So we will have a bag of Epsom salt, which is just magnesium sulfate. We will have hopefully hot water. I'm going to try and get us some clean hot water from our coffee machine that we have on site. I will also have pre-made crystals for you to view that'll be on tinfoil. If your class doesn't have time to finish letting your super saturated solution crystallize, I will have some that have been drying that you can look at as well. And that actually will help us talk about a time lapse of how crystallization forms. If you're in the 1130 class, you'll also be able to view the 1030 or 11 a.m. science classes to see how have they changed over the past hour to half hour. All right, so I'll go ahead and show you the actual experiment that I did at home, and then we're going to talk about crystals. All right, tutors, for the actual community day experiment, we're going to be taking some warm water. Again, I'm going to try and get the coffee maker to produce this for us because it does give us better crystals if the water is warm. I'm going to put two tablespoons of water. And then I'm going to put two tablespoons of Epsom salt in. One drop of red dye is plenty. And then we're going to mix this up until it is completely saturated. We can see the crystals form during our class. So because we're delving into a little bit of chemistry this week in our geology, um, I've separated out between the younger classes and the older classes what we're going to give them as an introduction to chemistry. I know some of our students have gone through the cycle with chemistry and some have not. So in your tutor binder, there is a question for, uh, I have separated out from pre-K through first grade and then second it up. So there are three basic ways that crystals form. When liquids cool and start to harden, so snowflakes are our crystals from when liquids cool and start to harden. When magma cools, this creates diamonds and other gemstones, or when water evaporates from a mixture, and that is the type of crystal that we're going to make today. For our younger students, we're going to just leave it at that. Now, for the older classes, I have a more in-depth explanation for this. I'll go ahead and go over that with you because it's important for the rest of our video. So, through the process called crystallization, that's our important vocabulary for this, crystals form in nature when liquids cool and start to harden. What this means is that the molecules in the liquid all rush together in an attempt to become stable. The way that they come together is in a repeating pattern. This is my salt molecule. They come together in a repeating pattern. So here you can see my repeating pattern. Yellow, yellow, blue, yellow, yellow, blue. 
So the most important information to take away from how crystals are formed is for our students to understand that crystallization occurs when atoms are formed in a very specific and repeating pattern. So secondly, for the older kids, crystallization also occurs when magma begins to cool. And so for both the older and younger kids, when we get to number two, how crystals are made when magma cools, we can go over our science vocabulary from week 18. What are some parts of a volcano? So as magma slowly cools and we get igneous rock, crystal formations are found in the igneous rock after the magma has cooled down. Remember, igneous rock is made from magma cooling down. So diamonds, emeralds, and rubies are all going to form this way. And then lastly, explaining to the older students what we're going to be making today. This is when water evaporates from a mixture. Now the reason that we're using hot water in our super saturated Epsom salt and water mixture is that when the water is more hot, you can fit more salt molecules into the hot water. And as the water cools, the salt all comes together, rushes together, and that's creating the crystals that we see. So another way to look at this is that when water molecules disappear through evaporation, they turn into water vapor and we cannot see them anymore. Molecules find each other, the salt molecules find each other, and join back into larger crystal structures. All right, so let's look at some of our crystals that we are going to have in our science lab. So this is a quartz crystal. This is a natural quartz crystal. It has not been cut. This is the way that they form. And that is why it's important to talk about repeating patterns of atoms because that's what gives a crystal its shape. Now the quartz forms when magma cools slowly. So I want to show you a really cool picture that I will have in our tutor binder. This is no longer accessible to the public. It was only open for a short time. It is called the Cave of Crystals in Mexico, which fits into our geography. So with the Cave of Crystals, you have just the absolute perfect environment for growing these giant crystals. There are no larger crystals anywhere on Earth that we are aware of maybe further down in our geosphere. So the conditions that are perfect for growing crystals, it's extremely hot. It's approximately 140 degrees Fahrenheit in the cave. There is super saturation. There is a lot of humidity in the air and there is heat. So as the water that is in the cave evaporates, it leaves behind the atom and molecule crystal structure, which has allowed these crystals to grow over thousands and thousands of years. The groundwater is saturated with calcium sulfite, and when that evaporates, because of the proximity to the magma, the heat under the ground, it allows it to evaporate. It grows these gigantic assemblies of crystals. I will also have raw emeralds, which are crystals that each student can take home with them. So here's an example of that. Let me show you what they look like. There will be a baggie in each classroom. When you think of emeralds, you probably think of cut emerald gemstones. So these are raw emeralds. They're very tiny. These are not some that would be easily cut. Um, they're worth putting in a rock collection. They're not worth anything else. You can actually buy these for about $6 a pound. Uh, a lot of people will use them for art or to practice cutting raw emeralds. And I'll show you what that looks like under a microscope. All right. 
because you can see the surface of the emerald is very shiny. And you can look at any of these under the microscope or with our little student magnifying glass that we will have. So this is clear quartz. Now another type of quartz is a rose quartz. Now the difference in the color is just a difference in the chemicals that are inside the rock. So they're both quartz. They both form the same way. This one had a chemical in it that made it pink. This, an amethyst, is just this. It's a quartz, but this one had a chemical in it that made it purple. So see, you still have your point here, your crystal point. And these are formed by repeating patterns called a lattice, a crystal lattice. All right, and now for some microscope pictures. So this is sugar under a microscope. My microscope view of my sugar crystals. Now see the shape of these, and then I'm gonna show you salt crystals. So this is the cube shape of our table salt crystal. So when the solution has dried and you're examining your crystals, you should see something similar to this. Very beautiful crystal formations. I love how these look like snowflakes, which are another type of crystal. Uh, these bars are just really beautiful. And no crystal will be exactly the same. So this is a really fun experiment introduction to beginner chemistry. It has much more complex and far-reaching scientific application for students that are very interested in chemistry. Um, if older students are interested in researching this at home, a couple of different ways that you can do this are with building repeating patterns with Legos. This is how I am explaining this to my five-year-olds, is that crystals are made by stacking a repeating pattern of Legos on top of each other. Or with building blocks like these. Uh, these are really neat. I've made a cube here, which is my salt, and each piece is individual and it has different angles for building different things. So this is a really fun experiment that you can do. Um, I'll show you the brand that we have. This was actually a birthday present for my daughter. Um, really neat, they come in little balls. And I'm sure we'll be using this when we get into chemistry uh, in our next cycle.